Good morning. I work at uh, the United States in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee at the University, which is a beautiful college town nestled in the Appalachian Mountains. This is my disclosure slide. I need to tell you that I really was raised in uh, the southwest United States and it looked more like this. The topic I'll address is durability paired with innovation and how to achieve lower profile without compromising performance. It was a Greek god Janus who said you can best predict the future by looking at the past. If we look at the past of open aneurysm repair, it's defined by flexible tubes, excellent patency, excellent durability, and it's intuitive that the early endographs would have a similar construct. This was followed by brisk enthusiasm with rapid innovations, many devices, and similar features. The early devices uh, were characterized by failure modes specific to each device, and an air of endo exuberance was rapidly tempered with endo reality. The unsupported graphs failed by uh, kinking at the iliac region. The supported limbs were shown to fare better than unsupported limbs, as shown in this graph here. And this led to adjunctive stenting to improve iliac patency. We also learned to respect the interface between the stent and the uh, graft and know that the devices had to be flexible to preserve integrity, to avoid graft erosion, and to prevent graft migration and the ultimate therapeutic failure, aneurysm rupture. It was the journal Wired that said this error could be described where technology makes some surgeons better, but others just braver. So we learned common denominators of failure. It depends on fixation, seal, patient selection, and ultimately graft construct. We've learned in America that in the world of aortic endografting, if you push the envelope, you'll pay the price. But progress in this field is inevitable. The gradient is based on the common pathology of aortic aneurysms, the lethal natural history, and the inherent morbidity and mortality of open repair. The outcomes literature is encouraging. We have improved devices, better judgment and skills, and it's resulted in better outcomes. So where do we stand? We now have level one data that demonstrates marked improvement in perioperative mortality, significant improvement in perioperative morbidity, and dramatically uh, minimized postoperative discomfort. The horizon is uh, characterized by uh, iliac access and expanding our reach to treat patients uh, with anatomy like this, all avoiding the clinical ultimatum uh, with diminishing uh, durability. It's all about the profile durability ratio. The Gore excluder achieves a lower profile and the same durability, and it does this by using the same device. It has the same components, which are crushed into a stronger, smaller delivery sleeve, as characterized the original device at 18 French, now diminished down to 12 French, a 33% reduction by a stronger, uh, firmer crushing delivery sleeve. The profile reduction varies between 10 to 33 percent, and it's most dramatic at the larger ILAC devices. This is all performed with using the same device and the same deployment methodology, and allows us to traverse the same uh, tortuous uh, ILAC anatomy. It's uh, uh, based on a platform with proven safety and efficacy, with data characterizing excellent uh, low ruptures, surgical conversions aneurysm-related deaths and migration. This Eurostar data compares the different aortic uh, endographs, and I'd like to draw your attention to the uh, region that shows the excellent uh, low rates of kinking and occlusion for the uh, ILAC uh, limb of the excluder device. This is confirmed by a literature review of limb occlusion of the excluder and a literature review of uh, limb kinking of the excluder device. If you dissect the mechanism, it's clear that smooth pipes or patent pipes and that the fabric of these segmented ILAC limbs uh, results in infolding. And the infolding causes stenosis, turbulence, and ILAC limb thrombosis. This uh, demonstration shows the 15% uh, oversizing where it results in infolding of this endurant device. And it's more dramatic uh, considering the Zenith device at 15% uh, oversizing. It's absent in the excluder device at 15% oversizing. 
Indeed, uh, the ability to adapt to morphologic changes is predicated on a fully supported limb. This uh, kinking and perforation is uh, omitted, and it's all about stent spacing, amplitude, and avoiding enfolding. So the fully supported limbs have apices uh, inside each other, allowing it to be fully supported. It, it provides patency and integrity, avoids kinking, and provides right. durability. So we can expand our reach, maintain durability, and because you can, doesn't mean you should. Thank you.